I mean, again, he, he doesn't know who Gabriel is, right? Because he didn't come from an Abrahamic faith. The people of Mecca were pagan. The Quran has mentioned if this book was from other than God, they would have found in it many contradictions. If a book is without contradictions, that has no bearing on whether it comes from God or not. I've had phone books that are inerrant, but I certainly don't think God gave them. <laughs> that we believe without understanding. The brothers asked a very important question that most of the scholars say that listening to music, watching movies, and most of the television programs, they're haram. So how can we have fun? Let me tell you, brother, at the outset, that having fun is permitted in Islam as long as the fun is halal fun. <laughs> that the standard narrative has holes. The prophet tells us because Satan or the devil sleeps over our nostrils. Those who oversleep and not pray Fajr on time, Satan urinates in their ears. I really do think Jesus was crucified and that he really was dead and buried. He thought that he was a son of God in the sense that he was specially chosen by God. I think Jesus really did think he was going to be the Messiah, the future king of Israel. I mean, that is after all why they crucified him. All right, peace of Christ to all of you. I hope my voice is coming good and clear. Please invite your friends. <clears throat> uh, before we start, I saw a comment in the chat, a, a Muslim saying he is a perverted person. Oh, he's saying he, he revert, revert. Uh, you know, I don't know if you are uh, who you are, uh, but my friend, as you heard just your shake, he was saying that Muhammad is not from Abrahamic faith. So how you revert to, you know, to Islam, if, if Islam is the origin. And as you see, Muhammad himself was not a, even a Muslim. Uh, secondly, you uh, perverted to Islam because you, you like virgins and you like women with big breasts. I cannot find a reason for anyone who have little intelligence to say I converted to Islam unless he liked big boobs. So, you know, when you say to me, don't follow, listen to this foolish, are you talking about me or talking about Allah? I never heard of a God. He promised somebody if he believe in him, he will he give him women with big boobs. So when you talk about foolishness, I mean, I, th I think you are talking about yourself. A God who promised big boobs, he cannot be God. This is very silly and very stupid. And this is not doesn't fit with God. That be fit with the pimp. So this is who you are and this is what you belong to. You are following a God who promised you big boobs. And I'm so scared of those boobs because they might be cow's boobs. Now we go to the topic today. <clears throat> One of you, he told me there's a channel. I don't go and watch those channels, but it was interesting. Uh, a guy, his name, his, uh, uh, he called his channel the Marvelous Quran. But this guy is different from the rest. You know, he is different, kind, different level of Abdul. And obviously this Abdul, they have a war between them. You know, and this Abdul is no different. So you see the Abduls attacking the Abduls. And this Abdul attacking the other Abdul, and Abdul attack Abdul at the end of the day because Abdul cannot agree with Abdul about the big Abdul, Allah, what he says. And here you will see, and this is the video here, we will not play uh, all of it or, you know, so he, like, he cannot make a claim of copyright. U248, uh, where Jesus and Yahya join, brothers from the same mother. So this guy, he have a very, very weird ideas, and this is how we understand the Quran. To the point he go far, to the point he think that <clears throat> uh, Zechariah, you know, Zechariah is the father of Jesus, and he is the father of Yahya, and Yahya and Zechariah are brothers. And one of the things I found in his video, you know, I don't have really time to watch such a stupid things, but I find it very interesting, especially when he said the following, and I will make you hear it. Actually, I, I put it in the title that Allah he did hide the real meaning of the Quran for the last 1400 years. Listen carefully. The Quran takes time and patience and diligence and help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala discloses these facts. How many people in the past 1400 years have seen and read this expression right here and every single one of them was not allowed by Allah to see it as a <laughs> did you hear Abdul? Where is the Abdul? He said he perverted to Islam. 
it was not allowed by Allah for the last 1400 years to understand the word of Allah. Did you hear it? Listen carefully. It was not allowed by Allah. By Allah. For the last 1400 years to understand the word of Allah. I mean, how gold we can get more than this? Let me play it again. Actually, we should add this to the maybe to the, our uh, introduction. You know, maybe later uh, uh, our Sheikh here he can add it. So why we cannot understand the Quran for the last fourteen hundred years? Not because the Quran is a stupid made by a stupid idiot, and the Muslims are so confused after him because he was confused too. No, it was because Allah He don't want the Muslims to understand the Quran. For the last 40 listen carefully it's not even it's not me who's saying that the quran listen. takes time and patience and diligence and help from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allah subhanahu wa ta'ala discloses these facts how many people in the past 1400 years have seen and read this expression right here and every single one of them was not allowed by allah to see it muslims did you hear it why you cannot understand the quran because you were not allowed by Allah to understand the Quran. We will go with this. You know, <clears throat> if Allah don't want the Muslims to understand the Quran, the Muhammadan, for the last 1400 years, so why he sent the Quran? I mean, how stupid this Allah is. Not a single person as you heard from the Sheikh, he could and he was able to understand the Quran. Why? Because he was not allowed by Allah to understand the Quran. And then we ask ourselves, what is the point of the Quran then? Why Allah telling us the story of Yahya, which is supposed to join the Baptist, and we do not know where Muhammad got the name Yahya. And what is the point of the story of the guy, his name is Isa, who is supposed to be Jesus, and we do not know where Muhammad got the name Isa. What's the point of this story if Allah don't want you to understand the story? What's the point of any story in the Quran if Allah don't want you to understand the Quran? That is a clear indication that this is a book made by a man for the foolish people. What is the guy who said to us he perverted to Islam? Is that what you perverted to? 1400 years until now. The Muslim cannot understand the Quran. And then this guy, he starts saying things, you know, if I play the video, you will die laughing, you know, but I'm, I'm afraid he will go and he will make a complaint for YouTube. So we play a few seconds for security, for safety. And then this guy, he claimed that he have a proof that uh, Yahya, or John the Baptist, he is the brother of Jesus. Okay, well, what is the proof? <laughs> if you watch the video, you will, you will die laughing, especially if you know the Quran very well. <laughs> Oh boy, uh, you know, uh, I've, I, he's not worth, by the way, even to make a video to, to, to refute him, but I like the, the, from all his garbage there, I could not find a, a, actually something priceless as much when he said that it's Allah who hide the truth for the last 1400 years. Th this, is the, this is the best of his video. Otherwise, everything he's saying there, this guy is an idiot. Uh, I mean, how in the world this guy, he got the conclusion that Zechariah, who is the father of Yahya, is the father of Jesus. When the stupid Quran says that, I mean, this guy, this guy is really out of his mind. Jesus and John the Baptist, they are brothers? And he is quoting us for Quran, and he tried to fix it up together. And anyone who have little brain, he will see that this guy is out of control. You are a Muslim, big man, and you think this man he's spewing no sense. Well, it's not. Don't. It's not his fault, because if you read any interpretation of the Quran, you will find that all of them they say nonsense because the Quran does not make sense. As an example, the verse is in the front of us. The verse is here in the front of us. When somebody 
He want to present for you a story. So didn't he tell you who is Zachariah first? Who is Zachariah? Can you tell me, big man? Who is Zachariah? I'm not taking him seriously. I don't take Muhammad seriously. I don't take you seriously. I don't take Islam seriously. Islam is a stupid religion. When somebody want to talk about somebody, before about before I talk about the person, should I say shouldn't I say who is Zachariah? Who is Zachariah? You here we go. Tell me. You tell me from the Quran. Who is Zachariah? Similarly, the book mentioned a guy. His name is Zechariah. Who is Zechariah? You tell me. Who is Amran? Who is Israel? So when you speak about somebody saying nonsense, Zechariah is a prophet. Well, nice to meet you. The guy is Zechariah is a prophet. Okay, what is his book? What he said? What he did? Who is Zechariah? Guy is Zechariah is a prophet. Here we go. Okay, show me in the Quran where it says Zechariah is a prophet. Supposedly you are saying that this guy does not make sense when he talks, right? You are making fun of him. And supposedly you are the smart Abdul. And you are saying to me, Zechariah is a prophet. Are you telling me? Or are you asking me? What is the prophecy of Mr. Zechariah in the Quran? What is the book? What the book he gave him? As long as you made him a prophet. So, as you see, this guy is a big man, but all of them, they have big mouths, but they have nothing to say except gibberish. Zechariah is a prophet. Okay, what, what is the name of the book of Zechariah? And where do you get this from? I'm listening. Search Prophet Google. So you try to attack this poor Abdul, and supposedly you are smarter. But the fact is, both of you are the same level. Right? I bring you this man, uh, here another Abdul, he is trying to be smarter. All right, by the way, this man you are talking about, he have tens of thousands of followers, and all of them, they are praising Allah for him. Look what you just said. You are bringing the, us this man, I do not know, I cannot talk on him. It is not for me to do so, but I can say, is keep level head in matters of faith. What faith? Islam believe in destiny, there's no faith, which means your faith doesn't matter. Even your faith is a destiny. What, you are just an idiot. There's no faith in Islam. Faith is a destiny. When Allah, he create you, either he create you a believer or he create you a disbeliever. When Allah, he create you, either he create you to go to heaven, or create you to go to hell. It's not your, it's not your faith. There's no faith. And here you notice that all the Abdul are the same. You don't know what they are talking about. This guy or different guy doesn't matter. All of them they have like they are like a, like a copy paste machine. If you remember when we, we have this Indian sheikh from India, he called me with the long beard. You remember him? Uh, Fazil, what was, I forgot his name. And he said to me that this uh, child, he was the destiny mean, he was trying to fix it. The destiny mean that Allah, he knew the future. That's false. The destiny in Islam, Al-Qadr, is Allah, he is deny for him what he will be. And this is the hadith in front of you. And the Quran too. So when he created created as infidel in the day he was created so this person he have faith no faith doesn't matter Allah created him as an infidel he will die as an infidel and this is why Islam is a stupid cult because all what you do it doesn't matter what you do it is a destiny so now this guy he just said that the reason the Muslim could not understand the Quran for the last 1400 years, it was a destiny by Allah. Allah don't want them to understand the Quran. He don't want. Well, if we go by this, 
If Allah, he don't want you to understand the Quran, then Allah is the devil. Because he did jump 14 centuries, leaving people astray, and none of them knows what the Quran meant for. I don't know why this YouTube is not functioning, but as you see, it, the circle of death is going, you know. Maybe my internet is bad. <clears throat> Let me try to re-roll re the page. Yeah, okay, here we go. Everything we show the Muslims, anything we show, if I show you now what Ibn Kathir, he said about this verse, you say, I don't accept Ibn Kathir. Okay, do you accept a Tabari? Oh, a Tabari is a human. Okay, but if I show you Hadith, oh, Hadith can be fabricated. Like, what the heck? This religion is based on what exactly? It's based on who? They don't know. Those Abdu, they do not know what they believe in. So when this guy, he says, will Islam need the patient to learn, blah, 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 blah. And then Allah, he did not allow you to understand every, subhanAllah, every single person who did read the Quran, he did not see it. Why? Because Allah did not allow you to understand it. The Quran takes time and patience and diligence and help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala discloses these facts. How many people in the past 1400 years have seen and read this expression right here and every single one of them was not allowed by Allah to see it. You tell me what's happening. You are not allowed by Allah to see it. You are not allowed by Allah to see it. Why? Destiny. And then you ask yourself, if this is a book from God, why God, he don't want me to understand his book? What's wrong with this God? Do he have a problem? Is he mental? Is he? Muslims, they call themselves Muslims, but every Muslim have different understanding for his religion. Why? Because Islam is the most confusing, stupid cult. Like we asked big man, he said to us, isn't Zechariah a prophet? I asked him, okay, where it says he's a prophet? If the Quran says he's a prophet, okay, what is the book of Zechariah? What is what the name of the book? Obviously, Islam is a theft. Islam is a theft. When we spoke in the other day about the guy, his name is Al Khudr. Do you remember? Al Khudr. The Abdul who called me, the Sheikh, he started telling me that uh, Musa, he made a speech, and his speech he said that he is the most knowledgeable person between all men. Allah, he told him, Who told you that? Who told you that? There is more knowledgeable than you. Musa, he said to Allah, who? He said, Al-Khadr. Okay, where we can find the story in the Quran? How I can understand this story? You say to me, you go to the Hadith, but okay, well, hold on. So, if Allah told this story to Muhammad in the Quran, it should be in the Quran. It should not be in the Hadith. How Muhammad, he learned this story? Suddenly, we find in the Quran, uh, a guy, his name is Al-Khadr. But who is this Al-Khadr? You know, we don't know. Is he a prophet? We don't know. Is he an angel? We do not know. Is he Allah? And then you read the story, you will find there's no story in the story, it's just a cartoon. So Allah, he sent this guy to meet the person, his name is Al-Khadr. If you start reading the story, 
look how the story starts. Okay. Look, this is the beginning of the story. And وَإِذْ قَالَ مُوسَى And when Musa, he said to his servant, okay, what is the beginning of the story? Musa is already now in the, in, the, in the end of China, maybe. And now Allah, he told us, and when Musa, he said to his servant, what happened before we, he traveled? What, why he's there? The story is gone. Somebody ate it. There's no way the story is taught from here. And what the verse before it have to do with the verse after it? And what the verse after it have to do with the verse after it? And what the verse after it have to do with the verse before it? Nothing. Stupidity. So suddenly the Quran so speak. And when Musa he said to his servant, like, okay, why you what happened before? Okay, what he said to him, I will not give up and traveling until I reach the junction of the two seas. Okay, well, hold on. So didn't you tell me what is this is about? What junctions? What two seas? What traveling? Where are they going? So when this Abdul, he is telling you that the Quran, nobody knows its mean, and Allah, he don't want you to understand. He is expressing the stupidity of the Quran because the Quran is made by a stupid person. A person who tells the story from the end. Shouldn't you tell me first, where is Moses now? Where is he going? What he will give? He will not give up what? It's like you open your TV and then you find, the, what did I see? Which actor? Tom Cruise. Tom Cruise talking to his assistant. I will not give up, uh, uh, and even if I travel for 10 years. Okay, where is what? Give up what? What to seize? Where is the beginning? Right? Uh, El Bador. Again, you are just a foolish person. You do not know what you are saying. Destiny in Islam is not about projection of the future. It's about Allah deciding your future. And you are a certified idiot. Don't be upset for saying that to you. I will prove it to you in a second. You are just an ignorant. I'm not calling you names. I'm just describing your situation. This is your prophet. This is not about knowing. First of all, your God do not know the future. Your God do not know the future. We can prove it from the Quran. But before we go there, if we go to the Hadith, we will find. And this is, I'm, I'm going to show you a very authentic Hadith. So you don't say to me, oh, this is the Eve, and this is you know, stupid stuff. The game Muslims, they played. Read carefully. And this is Al-Bukhari. Allah Messenger said, the truthful, the one who tell the truth, Muhammad tell the truth always. He don't lie. You are collected in the in the mother of your in your in the womb of your mother for forty days as a semen. You see here, they don't tell, put the word semen, but the, you are collected as a semen for forty days, which is a stupid, proving again that Muhammad is a fraud. There's no semen can live for forty days. A different translation is going to show. Hold on, let us see. You are collected for your mother womb in the form of a blood form of a blood. This is supposed to be better now. Here, you are correct, collected in your mother womb uh, uh, as a clot again. Okay, let's continue. I mean, look at the madness. But anyway, one of them is enough. So, Al-Bukhari is saying clearly that you are collected in your mother womb for, uh, uh, for as blood or as semen, depending on the story. And then, those 40, uh, uh, you will be a clot for 40 days, and then a piece of flesh for 40 days, and then uh, 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 bones for 40 days. Total is 120 days. You are done. Allah created you now. And then Allah, he, he sent an angel to write four items for you. He write your deed. You see how stupid you are, the one who says to me, projection. He write your deeds. Deed, there's bad deed and good deed. Which means whatever you want to do is written by Allah. In the, and his time of death, when you will die, it's not a projection. It's about how you will live. His livelihood, whether he will be worshipped or he will be blessed in religion. So Allah, he write that for you. It's not a choice. And then the soul uh, will be breathed into him, which he mean at the end, in his body. So a man may do the deeds, criticize, or it's supposed to be like uh, to, uh, 
uh, to present the people of um, hellfire so he's a bad person all right he's a bad person so much that they wear is only a distance between him and the and the door of hell is a cubit or two read it and then what was written by allah by the angels of allah suppress that is destiny do you see the destiny so don't tell me this is prediction what's written by allah will suppress his behavior so this guy he is out of the control and then what is written by allah will take over so he start doing the deeds which you know uh, present the people of, of uh, paradise and then he enter paradise and then muhammad he said the opposite a person similarly a person who may do the deeds in the character of people of uh, paradise so much so he is only in the door of the heaven there's a distance of a cupid or two between him and the door of the heaven and then what is written by allah by the angels suppress and he start doing the deeds of hellfire in enter hellfire so what is what is uh, you said to me this is projection so obviously you are an idiot you do not know your religion there's no there's no faith in islam there's no there's no deeds there's no bad deed there's no good deed it's all all is written by allah even when adam he committed sin who is the one who made Adam commit sin? Allah. <laughs> what a stupid cult. Then you ask yourself, why Allah he kicked Adam from heaven if he is the one who forced him to do sin? Read it, this is all Sahih. This is Al-Bukhari. This is the most authentic. When Moses he argued with, uh, uh, with Adam and Muhammad as usual. He is a time traveler. How Moses met with Adam, don't ask. Don't tell. All right? He said to him, as you see, all of this is sahih. Uh, Moses saying to Adam, because of you, we are out of heaven. Because of you. Then, uh, Adam, he says to him, uh, Moses, you are the one who Allah spoke to him directly. Are you blaming me? Listen carefully. Do you blame me for an action which Allah has written in my fate 40 years before my creation? So what is the, 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 the mad person who says to me, I, I converted to Islam? You are just a fool. This is not a projection about the future. This is about, not about knowing the future. This is about you cannot blame me for my sin because it's written for me to do that. So it was the plan of Allah for Adam and every one of us to do what we do. This is why, you know, once a, a, a woman, she called the sheikh, she said, I am over 30. I'm afraid I'm not going to marry a man. You know, I become older in the Middle East, 30, that's mean you're old. Who's going to marry you now? Hard to marry. So she, he said to her, my daughter, don't worry. The prophet says every vagina written on it, the name of the one who will if it. It's destiny. It is destiny. Even the one who will have sex with a vagina, it is written as a destiny from Allah. And I am sure that women in the same day, after she finished the phone call, she went to the bathroom and she started taking pictures and she started zooming in, trying to find the names of the guys who will do boom boom with her because she is worried. She's getting old and nobody married her. And then you say to me, this is about Allah knowing the future. You are ignorant. So do you blame me for faith written for me 40 years before my creation? Who you ask yourself a question? Well, if Adam, we can't blame him for the sin he did. So why he asked Allah to, uh, to forgive him? How stupid is that? Why I need to ask Allah to forgive me for a sin I've been forced to do? So when this Abdul here in his video, he says that Allah, he don't want the Abduls he don't want them to know. All those years, the meaning of the Quran, because Allah is Satan. There's no other explanation. Why Allah don't want them to know the truth? You tell me. True God, he wants you to know the truth. That's why Jesus said, read the books. Search for the truth. The truth will set you free. He encourages us to read. He don't want us to be ignorant. 
But here we see that Allah don't want you to know. All right, continuing with the story of Yahya, again, refer to part one if you want to see the details. Here's the ayah that I was telling you about. Let's go back a little bit. All right. Room for doubt whatsoever. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us the story, tells us another version of the same story, but they integrate and fit so well together, like pieces of the puzzle coming mm -hmm. together to make us believe the whole thing and to understand the whole thing. So what was missing in one part of the story is provided in the other part of the story. First of all, why there's a part of the story here and part of the story there? Shouldn't be the story in the same story? Have you ever heard of somebody who writes a story? One part is here and one part is there. Like imagine you go to your kitchen and you are looking for the cooking pot. And the cooking pot in one place and the cover in, in different destination. Why? The handle is not there. The cooking pot in different place. The cover in different place. There's no deed if everything you do, what's wrong with you, El Bedro, El Bodor? Are you mental? What's wrong with you? Don't you see that the deed you do, it is what Allah, He decides. It's, the deed you do doesn't count. The deed which Allah, He wrote for you, is what will make you go to heaven. I mean, why you are wasting my time with stupidity? And vice versa. Unless you are really engaging the Quran fully aware, fully awake, making sure you don't underestimate Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, mm -hmm. making sure you don't belie the Quran, making sure you don't take one part and forget about the rest. Right. You don't understand these stories. Exactly. This is why engagement of the Quran takes time and patience and diligence uh -huh. and mm -hmm. help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh -huh. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala discloses these facts. Mm -hmm. How many people in the past 1400 years have seen and read this expression right here, and every single one of them was not allowed by Allah to see it. And Look how stupid this is a statement of this person. He just said, in order to understand the Quran, you have to put the buzzer together. You have to do this and that. You have to be patient. You have, you have, you have. And then he says, Allah did not allow us to understand. So how we can put the puzzle if Allah is not allowing them to understand? If this is the wise man of you speaking like that, what about the stupid one of you? How I can put the puzzles if Allah did not allow us to understand? And the madness went so far to the point Jesus became the brother of Yahya. That's mean that Mary is not virgin, you idiot. <laughs> so how the Quran says that Mary she is a virgin? Because if 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 Yahya is the brother of Jesus, that means Mary she gave birth to Yahya first, and then she gave birth to Jesus. So how she is a virgin? <laughs> Stupid is amazing, and that means Maryam is an old woman, very old. Isn't it the Quran says that she is, you know, the, the, the wife of Zechariah is Aqir? And isn't it the Quran says that Maryam, the daughter of Amran? I mean, what's wrong with this religion? And you know, he made response to Abdul, who is attacking him. And he said to him, I am a poor person. I'm not here trying to make money. So I went to his website. This is his website. The Marvelous Quran. By Dr. Hani Achan. I don't know. Achan? Achan, Achu, who care? And then you find that you have a membership. Plantum level membership to all benefit. Uh, yeah, here we go. $200 a month, $2,000 a year. To do what exactly? $200 a month 
or two thousand dollars a year save 17 percent somebody tell christian prince this guy is doing everything for free two hundred dollar a month and he said in his video you don't say about me i'm about money if you know i am you know i'm not interested in money but you want two thousand dollars from every person who want to subscribe to your website well, why exactly what you will do silver level partnership and there's silver there's gold ah this is gold one plantium sorry this is plantium higher than gold so ah, this is for the you know like for sure people have ranks you know there's rich there's so so there's poor who care for the poor if you are a poor get get lost right uh i will debunk your lies my skype is indian khan uh, uh, are you indian khan from uh, from africa <laughs> okay i will open skype just for you <laughs> are you in skype now mr uh, indian khan hmm. all right Where is the Skype? <coughs> Mr. Indian Khan. Oh, Indian Khan, I'm, I'm going to Skype now. Uh, just uh, text me and I will call you. <coughs> so I find that, you know, whatever he say there is not worth it. Let him have fun with the Abdul. But he is doing a good job, actually, because that will make the Muslims see how much confusion they have in their cult and how much is Islam is stupid. You know? Indian Khan, he is, here we go. Let us call him. <laughs> Hello? Confusion. This is the ultimate fault, I think. Hello, ultimate. Hello. Hey, shut up. <laughs> ultimate fault. I was right. <laughs> the ultimate fault. Your voice will not come through in my channel. If you go and listen, you will see nobody heard you. Honestly. You see how you are Indian Khan and you are you are a guy from Africa. I mean, you even you don't even have the, the the dignity for a second. What a coward you are! Go clean your wall, potato. Filthy mouth. Yeah. Because there's no Muslim. He have little brain. He will dare to call me. This guy is out of his mind. The Arab are stupid. The one who wrote the, the hadith are the Arab corrupt. They are stupid. Which means his prophet is a stupid too, because his prophet is an Arab. And uh, uh, the Quran, you do not need to understand Arabic to understand the Quran. And then we say to him, okay, so how you can understand the Quran? He said, I do not know Arabic to understand the Quran. Okay, so how you understand the Quran then? <laughs> All right. We thought uh, it's a it's a fish. Do we have any Muslim would like to call us? Yeah, but anyway, it's really good to, to see, uh, uh, you know, Muslims uh, coming to the conclusion that Islam is really messed up because their prophet is a messed up person. Any here, any chapter in the Quran, the second you see the chapter, anything, you will see that the Muslims have no answer for anything. Like, when the Quran says, and when the wife of Amran said, okay, who is Amran? Didn't you tell your people who is Amran first? Who is this guy? And when Amran, wife, she said, who is Amran and who is his wife? Find the solution now. How this is can be a message from God? A Muslim, can somebody tell me who is this guy, Amran? 
Where is located? Where is exist? Son of who? And then the wife of Amran, she said to Amran. And the wife of Amran, she said to her God. So the story starts from the wife of Amran. And then you go and you find that the whole chapter is called the chapter of Ali Amran. Why? Because everybody in this chapter is from one father, Amran. But Amran is not really the father of Mary. How stupid is that? So according to the Quran, Mary is the daughter of Amran, but Amran is the father of Moses. And this is why we see the Quran in different verses that Mary, the sister of Aaron. This is a book written by a stupid person. He's very confused. By the way, one of the stories of Muhammad, that Aaron, when he died, Aaron, when he died, there was 20,000 men in his funeral, and all of them, their names is Aaron. <laughs> I mean, who is in the world can believe in such a garbage for a second? Every single person attend the funeral of Aaron, the brother of Mary, or Maria. His name is Aaron. And they are 20,000. It looked like at that time, the only name is known is Aaron. And all the Jews, when they have a son, they call him Aaron. 20,000, they attend the funeral, and all of them, they are. Their name is Aaron. Madness, stupidity, crazy, you know, you name it. And as usual, Muhammad, he don't even keep the numbers. Like once, one place he says something, different place he says something else. <clears throat> uh, do we have any Muslim want to say anything? Any Muhammadan? The 20,000 is from Tafsir and supposedly it's coming from Muhammad, yeah. You see, all the, all the information, how, how the Muslims they knew about Aaron or anything, Muhammad. All the madness is coming from Muhammad. Let me see if I can find the reference. Hold on. Right. Let us see. Now, for sure, the numbers can change depending on the reporter. You know, who is the one who is reporting the story? I will, I will try to find it maybe just you know I need to remember exactly what the hadith is saying to get the to get the reference because you have to search exactly 
uh, the exact sentence to get exactly the hadith. Let us see. Let us see. Enter now. I don't see the reference. I will find it. But this is for sure, you know, we don't say things without without being true. Mm. Anyway. Do we have any Abdul? Actually, I shared the reference before, but right now I don't really remember the exact sentence. I wasn't really going live on air. I was, you know, I told you I was just to throw up. Uh, I'm not sure why, even, you know, what, why I did throw up. Uh, maybe the food was not good. Uh, Let us see, try again. Mm, and then now I cannot find it. That I made a video about it before. And because I did not use this reference for long, so I, I I forgot the exact details to find it. Mm. Yeah, and then now it's not fine. Anyway, we will find it. We will. Actually, I found different reference. Hold on. And this reference, it says that they were 40,000, not 20,000. <clears throat> As I said to you, Muhammad, he cannot repeat the same story twice correctly. Here we go. We found this. We will use Google Translation. 
This is the book Al Bidaya and Nihaya Ibn Kathir, volume number eight. Sorry, by number number two, page number eighty-one. Translate to English. It's not working. Why? Try again. All right. Uh, what happened? Here we go. Uh, the book of Al Bidaya and Anihaya, the beginning at the end, Ibn Kathir, very number two, uh, two, page number 81. If we click in it, let us see what the story here. All right. Here it says, and it's mentioned by Qutada and many others. Uh, that they used to call, they used the name Harun a lot. Even it says that before, uh, uh, when, when they attend the funeral of Aaron, many, many people came to the point from those who they are called Aaron, there was 40,000, their name is Aaron. Let me use Google translation. And let us zoom in a little bit so you can read better. Qutada and others, they mentioned that they used to name a lot of Aaron, you know, Harun. Until there was said, it's like I said, that in the funeral of Aaron, they were attended by many human beings. Among them, they were called Aaron 40,000. Do you see it? Yeah. Welcome to Islam. Imagine. In, you, in the funeral of a Christian prince, there was 40,000, their name is a Christian prince. Huh. Things happen. Only 40,000, all, all of them, their name is Aaron. I'm trying to pause the link, it's not going through, it's very long. Because there's Arabic in it. <laughs> Who dare to question? That's it. Put any stories there, they will accept. When Joe Biden he died, brother, there was forty thousand attending. This is some of the people, not all the people, but forty thousand of them. Their name is Joe Biden. It must be a true story. I will change my name if you want, brother. Why, Jeremy? Are you want to attend my funeral? <laughs> God will not come as a man if it cause of worship. The God uh, will not divide in a three, as you claim. If he function in one, why uh, why say one? I mean, you are you are really mentally suffering because God, if he cannot be three and one at the same time, then he cannot be God because nothing is impossible to God. You, Muhammad, and your logic is very silly. When we say God, God Almighty, and then you say God cannot be doing that, that means God cannot be God. Who are you to tell God what he can be, what he cannot? What one part function? Who told you that Christianity believe in parts? And who told you that God is divided? Very silly. Secondly, if you are saying to me, God cannot come as a, as a man, that means God cannot be a God too, because the God who cannot do something, obviously he cannot be God. Who can stop God from coming as a man, you or me? Or maybe his ability. However, you are a fool, like the rest of them. Your prophet, he got you busted. Your God, Allah, is a man. And he looked like the fake Messiah, the Antichrist. He's fat, he's short, and he have a big ass. And this is your prophet describing him. And this is Sahih. 
The only difference between the look of the true Allah and the false Allah, which is the Antichrist, which is a man, is one eye. So those ignorant, they do not know their religion. They are just copy-paste. They do not know Christianity, what we believe. They do not know their religion. I never saw a Muslim, by the way. He knows what he's talking about. Do you see it? What is the difference between the true Allah and the man who is coming to say, I am the Messiah? This guy is a man. He is a man. And why Muhammad is so afraid that they will be confused? Confused about what? If the guy, he is a man, why they will think he's Allah? Because Allah is a man too. And both of them, they are fat and short. And this is Sahih Hadith, as you see. They can't say this is weak and this garbage. Sahih. Now what the Muslim, they will respond to this, they will say, CP, this hadith is reported by uh, uh, Shuraih, by uh, Buteto, by Bajajo, by Khalid, by Tom Tom, by Mickey Mouse. And everybody knows that Mickey Mouse, he lie. Everybody knows. What the heck? They have to find a way to escape it. And Christian Prince is lying. This is your website. This is your hadith. It says this is authentic. It's a lie, brother. Christian Prince is lying to you. This is not authentic. So why your website is authentic? They are lying. They are lying too. Everybody lying in this world, you know. When it's come to Islam, everybody is a liar. The Muslims, they are liars. Because when they say to you, it is weak. They are saying to you that there's some Muslims, they lie about what the Prophet said. How you can trust this religion? If the believers of Islam, they are liars about what their Prophet said. What is left? You see, every single name mentioned here, those are not normal people. Those are the highest. Correct? If I want to quote for you a story that Jesus said, I have to quote somebody he mentioned, and I want to trust what he said. Otherwise, why I want to mention that Jesus says so? As an example, I will not quote Muhammad saying Jesus said so, because Muhammad is not trustworthy for me. And Muhammad was not even in the time of Jesus. Ah, and I forgot something. This guy in his video, he said, that a tabari or not, not this guy, this is a different idiot. He said a tabari brother, a tabari was not exist in the time of the prophet. He, he came 300 years after a tabari. So you came 1400 years after, and you know the Quran better than a tabari. I mean, look at this, this stupid logic. You see how their logic work? He is complaining that a tabari is not a person who was exist in the time of Muhammad. He was more than 300 years, according to him. So you who came a thousand years after, 1100 years after, you can explain it. But the one who, because he came, because he came 300 years after Muhammad, he is not to be trusted. <laughs> you see the madness? And that reminds me of the Quran, by the way. When the Quran says the following, and this is here showing you the low IQ of Muhammad. Read with me and try not to laugh. Chapter 3, verse number 65. Chapter 3, verse number 65. Muhammad is trying now to refute the Christians and the Jews. Muhammad gets smarter. He is taking Viagara. So look what he said. O people of the scriptures, why you dispute about Abraham, why the Torah and the Injil were not revealed until after him. Have you no sense? I mean, do you see the stupidity? The one who come after, he can dispute the one who came before him. So how Muhammad disputing the Christians and the Jews? 
Do you see the stupid logic? The logic is that the one who came after, he cannot dispute the one about the one who came before. Okay, but you are the last one. Madness. And if the one who come after, he cannot talk about Abraham. So why you are talking about Abraham? Who is the one who have no sense here? How far stupidity can go? Anyway. Uh, any other comment? Actually, this verse alone is enough to prove to you that the one who wrote the Quran is not only stupid, not only he cannot be God, I mean, this is stupid. Because this is against you, not against them. The one who came after, he can dispute the one who came before him. And if they cannot talk about Abraham because he came before them, then you cannot talk about Abraham too because Abraham came before you, long before both of you. Mentally ill. If there's any Muslim who want to say something to us, by the way, I was going to publish the Persian uh, book. But I found that there is this book need a lot of work still because the guy who translate he made it word and he makes the English with the with the Persian and that is not really what I want. So we need to do some cleaning for this book. I will find somebody to do cleaning for the translation before we publish it. Otherwise, I was preparing actually today when I turn on my computer uh, it's just to go live and tell you about uh, to download the new book, the Persian book. This is Allah revealing things about the past. How, how he, I, I, uh, listen, how Allah reveal things about uh, the past if it's in the past? I mean, this is stupid. Guys, last, uh, in the year, listen, listen, people. This God, he revealed things about the past. Everybody knows the past. We do not need you to reveal it. And your God, he revealed nothing about the past to be correct. Mary is the sister of Aaron. Haman is the minister of, of the Pharaoh. The Pharaoh is the one who built the Babylon Tower. The Pharaoh, his wife, her name is Asiya. When the, her, his, the wife, her name is Nefertari. His name is Pharaoh. Your prophet, he, your, your God, he revealed the past. This is amazing. I know the past. You do not need to reveal it for me. The, the God, he revealed the future. Everybody knows the past. And when the Muslims say to you that how the Quran knew that the, the, the Pharaoh, his body preserved, Abdul, everybody knows the mummies. The graves of the Pharaoh, the Ramses, is, is, is bigger than, than, than your, your head. Have you ever heard of somebody who not know about the mummies? So Allah revealed the past. I mean, madness, they are, they are desperate, trying to find something about their God. Have you ever heard of somebody who never heard of the mummies of the pharaohs? About the tomb of the pharaohs? Your God, he revealed it. What is that? I mean, it's so big. You know, El Pedro, you are again being a fool because a Muslim, he cannot wish me the best. That is against Islam. You are just a fool person. You do not know what your religion teach. I feel sorry for you. A true Muslim, he cannot wish non-Muslims any good. A true Muslim, he cannot wish any non-Muslim any good. You are just an ignorant. And this is why each time you say something, I feel sorry for you.
According to Islam, we are the enemies of Allah and we are the enemies of Jibreel. And Allah is our enemy and he is our, you know, he considers us our enemy too. So how you wish me the best? And not only that. Muhammad, he forbid you even to wish your family good things, your own parents, if they are not accepting Islam. The Quran says, you will not find one good Muslim, one true believer. He is, he love or he is kind with non-believers. Even if they are their parents. Chapter 58, verse number 22. You will not find any people who believe in Allah and the last day making friendship with those who oppose Allah and his messenger. Even if they are their fathers, their sons, their brothers, their mothers, etc. So what this guy is talking about? Eh, they throw words, you know. They try to act like they are the, the guru, you know. He's the guru. Suddenly Islam is a guru religion, guru of love. It doesn't work this way. You're a prophet is a criminal. This is a chapter 58, verse number 22. Yeah, guard your children as Tara, she said. But Tara, the way to guard your children is not by not telling them about Islam, but by doing the opposite. So when your children, they go to school, already they learn about how filthy this cult is, right? Guarding your children. You see, many people, when they have children, is what they do. You don't want your child to get sick, right? So what do you do? Uh, you cover him, you make him wear 20 jacket, 20 hat. Uh, you know, socks, etc. So this kid, he is fuffy. Anything can make him sick because he never makes foes. That's why you see a child who is born in a village is way stronger, healthy, more than a person who is born in a city. Where the family, his clothes is dirty. You know, well. So your child can be way stronger if you don't treat him as a child. You treat him as a person who needs to survive. And the way to survive is to contact the bacteria. Let him walk. Let him get dirty. Let him play with dirt. Otherwise, later, anything he touch will make him sick. Let his body get ready for all the risk in this earth. And Islam is one of it. So you need to teach your children about the cult of Muhammadan. So when they go to school, they will not show them a video says the scientific miracle of the Quran. He's a child. You don't know. You might believe it. Right? Some people, they think by not exposing their children to garbage, they are protecting them. You have to show them the garbage because garbage is there. If you hide them from the garbage, time will come and that will not work. When the Caliphate, Omar, the filthy Omar, he attacked the Christians and he took Jerusalem. He put one of the conditions on the Christians. They should not teach their children the Quran. Why? Because he knew if they teach them the Quran, then the Christian, they will be able to respond and to refute the Muhammadan. Do you understand? They don't want you to know. And the example is, is me. If I do not know anything about the Quran, how I can refute them? You know what I'm saying? If you're a child, he knew that Jehovah's Witnesses is a cult. Let Jehovah's Witnesses speak to him for a year. He will laugh at them. But he never heard of them. He will think that they are bringing God to him. Don't wait until illness comes to your door. Be ready for it. Uh, 
Uh, anyone have a question? Anyone? Albad <clears throat> Albador, uh, you are again being an ignorant. Quran 582 is a, is, a, is a verse of hate, just to show you how stupid you are. I'm sorry to say to you, I keep saying to you the word is stupid, but you are, because you are blind. You did not see how stupid this verse is. This verse is teaching hate. Muhammad is trying to divide between the Christians and the Jews, trying to spread hate between us. So look what he said. He says, the most close people to you is the Christians. Okay, Christians are good to you, Muslims. It's not the opposite. It's us being good. And then he says, the most enemy people to Muslims is the Jews. But guess what? Nobody supported Islam and Muslims as much as the Jews. They supported you against the crusade. They supported you when you invaded Spain. They supported, they supported the Persian when they inv invaded Jerusalem. They, they always support Muslims against the Christians. So here Muhammad, he lie. Number one supporter for Muslims through centuries against Christianity, it was the Jews. And then Muhammad here is trying to divide between the Christians and, and the Jews, so we hate each other. At the same time, Muhammad, he said in the Quran, chapter 5, verse 51, the same chapter. Take not Christians and Jews as a friends. The same chapter. You cannot take me as a friend. So if the Quran is saying we are the most nice people to Muslims, that's because we are following Jesus. Jesus says, love your enemy. Muhammad, even he is filthy, he could not deny that. But the same filthy man, he says, take not Christians and Jews as friends or protectors. The same chapter. And not only that, the same chapter says that Allah will spread hatred until the day of judgment between the Christians. Chapter 5, verse 14. So the foolish you, you see, you search in Google, you find a verse, you post it for me, but you do not know what you are posting. This is the book of the devil. If I ask you, who is the one who has spread hatred between people? You say to me, Shaitan. Okay, that's a good answer. But this is Allah. Read it. This is the Quran. Who is the one who has spread hatred between everybody? Satan. Exactly, Satan. I don't hate the Muslims. I don't want the Christian to hate them. We want to love the Muslims. But Muslims are forbidden to love us. And even their God, he is the devil. He announced himself to be the devil, that he will spread hatred between us until the day of judgment. And look, if the Christians, let us say for the sake of argument, they are deceived. Is that what you do when somebody is deceived? You spread hate between them? Or you try to show them the truth? This is the opposite of what Jesus said. Jesus said, I came for the sick. Correct? I came for the sick. Uh, El Badru, just get out of here. I mean, guardian. You, you stupid idiot. If we cannot take you as a guardian, that means you are our enemy. Just get out of here. Go and do your popo in a different place. He don't mean a friend. He mean guardian. Guardian. Why you cannot take me as a guardian unless you have you have hatred in your heart? That's mean I am a good person. I want to take you as a guard. I want to I want to guard you. I want to protect you. So why that is forbidden for you? What's wrong with me protecting you? And if you don't like it, if you are really following the Quran, so why you live in the West? Go to America. Go to Saudi Arabia. Based on this verse, if you cannot take us as a guardian, then a Muslim should not live in this country. Not in America. Not in Europe. Not anywhere. They should go to Indonesia, maybe. Hypocrites. Poo -poo, poo -poo, poo -poo. Turkey. Turkey is more useful than you. Being guardian. Supposedly he fixed it now. Being guardian. Not friends. That is even more evil. And the funny, all of those who attack Christianity, the Quran says to them, take not Christian Jews as friends and protectors. All of them, they live in the West. Go check last month how many 
Muslim countries are buying weapons from China. Taliban, they are asking the Chinese for help. But the Quran says, take them not as a friends. Oh, we can play taqiyya, we can play protection, we can play games. We, we are following the devil, we can lie to them. That's why the Quran says, chapter 3, verse number 28, you cannot take the Christians and the Jews as a friends. However, you can speak to them in a friendly way, but your heart is not like that. Taqiyya. You can speak to them in a friendly way. Listen carefully. But you cannot mean it. Read. If a Muslim, he want to take the disbeliever, the Jews, uh, etc., or the Christians as a friend, and he want to become an almighty and honorable to the believers, which means with the disbelievers, the one who is sincere with them, which means if you are sincere, to be my friend, the friend of Christian Prince, if you do that, seeking honor with someone is a Christian, treating the Christian with honor, by taking the hypocrites and, and disbelievers as a friends, he has no connection to Allah. Do you see it? He has no honor, which means Muslims can rape his wife. They can kidnap her. They can kill her. And they can kill him. He have no mercy, have no protection from Allah. Unless, ah, there's exception. It's yet to be guard yourself against them. Save yourself from them. Taking it as we're security. Saving yourself from them by speaking in a friendly way toward them while you're this, your heart is like this. And the funny, the verse itself, speaking about the hypocrite. But isn't it, this is the hypocrisy itself? <laughs> How are you, Muhammad Mikhail? Mikhail? Isn't it, this is hypocrisy? Isn't it, this is what deceiving is about? Speaking to me in a friendly way, but your heart is full of hate? Satanic cult. This is Satan. Jesus forbid us from speaking to the Muslims, saying to me, saying to them, you are my friend, when I have a hatred in our heart. This is against Christ. He said, love your enemy. Muhammad is teaching us, if we want to be Muslims, we have to lie to every single human being is not a Muslim as long as he's stronger. If we are not strong, what we can do? He's stronger. So we say to him, we are friends. That's what we do in America, right? Oh, we are friends with America. Yeah. We need the American army to protect the Kaaba. Hey, uh, George Bush, please come and free Iraq. Saddam Hussein is coming to Saudi Arabia. The stupid George Bush, he went there to defend the Kaaba. Saddam Hussein was going to go and take the Kaaba. If not the stupid George Bush, go to, the, to, to Iraq. Until now, those Muslims are in war together. Until now, Saddam Hussein will be there. He occupy Kuwait. He occupy God knows how much of Saudi Arabia. And, you know, Islam is shish kebab. They call George Bush. They kiss his shoes to come and save them. And then when George Bush come, they say the kuffar is here. <laughs> the same happened in Iraq when ISIS came. The Shia, the Sunni, please, America, come help us, please, please, please. And then when they, the American, they finish with ISIS, we want you to leave right now. Why you are here? Your occupation, hypocrites. And those stupid Americans, they never learn. They never learn. They are dummy. Right? When Taliban, Trump, he told the uh, Taliban, we are going to leave in this day. And Taliban, they are controlled only by 2,000 American. Imagine the whole country, just 2,000 American. They made Taliban set like puppies. Taliban suddenly they become heroes the day they are leaving. And where have you been for those 20 years? The guy he told you four years ago, in this day we are leaving. Taliban came to town. The Muslims, please take us to America, please. 
and people they have hold their, their their the feet of the airplane the tires someone he pushed himself in the engine i mean they don't want islam this is the truth afghanistan half of it already is out of afghanistan now and the rest they will go out soon what happened because islam is there but if you ask the Abdul who is running away from Islam, he's, I said to him, are you Muslim? He says, yes, I'm proud Muslim. <laughs> this, is, this is reality. Uh. In the last month only, like Erdogan, Erdogan, he invited all the big rabbis of the Jews and he told them how much he loved Israel and how much he support Israel and he said soon we are going to fix our relationship with Israel and we want our relationship to be wonderful why I mean Erdogan isn't him the one who want to take Jerusalem back he saw a dream that he is going to Jerusalem blah 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 this is all for election but under the carpet the Mossad is number one department who the Turkish took information from in everything. Every weapon Turkey made is under the supervision of Israel. The airplanes, the drone, missiles, anything. If the Israeli decide to stop, Turkey has nothing. A return Turkey, they give them all the steel they want. All the weapon of Israel is coming from Turkey. <laughs> but Erdogan, he hate them. Give a freedom to Palestine. This is what he say in TV. All of them, they are the same. But now, the mask is down. The mask of all of them. The king of Morocco, he's asking now Israel to support him in the coming war with Algeria. They are going to go in war. Azerbaijan, all their weapon is either coming from Turkey, which is coming from Israel anyway, or directly from Israel in their war with Armenia. Emirat, now they are buying weapon from Israel, and actually already they ordered some, so they can fight the Shia in Yemen. Same as Saudi Arabia, same as Bahrain. How long Iran and Israel, they will fight? They will never fight. Iran and Israel, they will never fight. All of this is just for propaganda. You see, the, the, the Muslim countries, they need always an enemy. Islam without enemy, die. This is what holds Islam together, is hate. So, if we, you know, the, the, the regime in Iran, if they don't have Israel, they have to find a replacement. America, well, eh, it's not convincing too much. Americans are not occupying Jerusalem, right? Israel, it's a small, it's tiny, it's easy to shout at, and they will not invade us because they are small. Americans are different. So, okay, the enemy is Israel. But here we go, the, the Khomeini regime is there for the last 30 years. They never shot a, a bullet at, at Israel. Not even one bullet. Who's stopping you? Every day they say, we can destroy Israel. We will destroy Israel. But they never shot a bullet. Never. So what they do? They have little, you know, milit militant. So when, when Hezbollah attack on Israel, they will say, this is not us, this is Hezbollah. <laughs> and now Hezbollah is playing the same game, by the way. Hezbollah is arming their enemies. It's the same garbage. But they will never fight. Because both parties, they don't want this fight. The Iranian, they knew they are no match. They are no match in any way, in any mean, you know. Israel will make them shish kebab in, in five minutes. The same in Syria, the same in Iraq. Saddam Hussein, Saddam Hussein, 
he decided to, to shoot a missile at the Israeli, but his missile did not even kill a rabbit. It's just propaganda. So the Muslim will support him because now he, he knew he's losing. He knew he's no match. It's a desperate you know, attack. He, is, he knew that his army is demolished. Uh, shoot missiles at Israel so he will get support from the crowd. But that will not do anything anyway. But I have to say that Israel, they have a leaders. His name is Netanyahu before. And he is the most coward idiot ever. And he is corrupt. And soon he will be in jail. I hope so. I hope this new guy is way better. We will see. Will Saudi and Iran will fight? Yes. If you take, if you, if you, you see the problem is the only one is stopping this war from happening is the American. American. Those American, their nose everywhere. If the American, they take their finger from the Middle East, this Middle East will be burning in five minutes. It is America who is stopping this war. Persian and Arab is the same as gas and fire. They don't mix. This is history. It will repeat itself. The Persian, they don't respect the Arab and they don't accept them to be their leaders. The Arab, they look down at the Persian and they will never accept the Persian to be their leader. Therefore, both of them, they are seeking power. And now because the Persian, it happened to be that they are the Shia and the majority of the Arab, they are the Sunni. So the war not only become Persian versus Arab, the war becomes Sunnis versus Shia. So now they have more fuel for the fight. Do you understand? Just today, 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 the Shia militant in Yemen, they attack the airport of Dubai. I don't know if any of you heard the news. But all of us, we knew that those Shia, they cannot really do such an attack. I mean, how in the world they can do such a thing? Those people, they are under drugs. They are not educated. You know, this is Iran. Iranian, they don't dare to do so. Because that will make America go involved and things will go big. So, UA under the attack of Al Houthi. Let us see where is the news. Here we go. Drone attack in Abu Dubai, blamed by Yemen rebels, killed three, and actually the three, one of them is Pakistani, and the other two, they are Indian, but they are Muslims too. This war is not a war between the Arab and the, and, the, and, the, and the Persian. This is war between the Arab versus Arab, but Shia versus Sunni. And the hatred is boiling. The only thing is stopping this from going big, so big, is the American. And actually, now because in America we have Joe Biden, it might happen that they go in war because Joe Biden is so weak. The guy, he don't even remember his name. And everybody knows that Obama, he favored Iran. Obviously, Obama is a Shia. He is the one who made the deal with, the, with, the, with Iran. So Iran will grow and become bigger and stronger. And Joe Biden, he do what Obama he want. So this is why now he's trying to get Iran into a deal so Iran will be stronger and all the sanctions will be left up. So Trump, he made Iran weaker. Joe Biden, which is Obama, is trying to get Iran back in its feet. This is the truth. Joe Biden is not the president. It is Obama. Obama is a Shia for sure. You see, Obama first, he said, my, uh, me, when they asked him about his, uh, about his faith, he said, me, uh, 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 me as a Muslim. You remember the, the it's, it's there in the internet. You can watch it. Why in the world do you want to say I'm me as a Muslim if he's not? You know, I mean, what is the option for me to make such a mistake if I am a Christian? So he said, me as a, my Muslim faith. And then when Obama, he did everything to protect Iran. He gave them billions of dollars, cash. And they will say to you, this is Iranian money anyway, but why you give it to them? You know how they will use it. 
And he is the one who made the deal. And the deal is for the benefit of Iran 1 billion percent. Why? Because it says after a certain year, which means three years from now, they can have nukes. So what the deal is about? It's saying you can have nukes. That's all. So Obama was doing everything he can to empower Iran, and he did. Iran became superpower in the time of Obama. When Trump he came, Trump he cut the wings of Iran. He, Iran is struggling even to breathe. Well, you know, there's European, they are just, I don't, you know, I don't want to insult the European people, but European Union as a governor, government, government is liberal, stupid people. Anyway. And now things is getting really out of control. So it might go in war. If, if the Iranian, they got the green light from Joe Biden, that they will, America will not involve Iranian, they can attack Saudi Arabia so easy. I mean, Saudi Arabia is not no match to Iran. Iran can take Emirat. This is why the Emirati, they are buying weapons like crazy. They are buying uh, uh, American airplanes, the most advanced ones. They are hoping that, yes, we are small, but look at Israel. It's a small too. If we buy the weapon, if we have the weapon, we can stop a country like Iran, but that is impossible. Why? Because Emirat, if we open the map, see, we're going out of the topic, but what they can do. If you go to the map, you will see that uh, United Arab Emirat, it's a walk step, walking steps from Iran. They don't even need to do invasion. Do you see it? This is this is nothing. This is you know this is in the corner of their of their, of their land. So, the Emirat, it's a small, tiny country, extremely small. Most of it is empty anyway, too. Population is so small. So they have no army. For sure they have an army, but it's nothing, you know? I mean, this is not even the size of a village in Iran. So if they want to go in war with Iran, if not the American, the Iranian, they will take Emirat in two minutes. The Qatar, this is why the Qatari prince, he invited the American to have the biggest base ever in Qatar. And this is the hypocrite. This guy is a Muslim Brotherhood. But the biggest base of the American army in the world is in Qatar, paid by the Prince of Qatar, because he have no protection. So he said to himself, let me bring the American, who dare to attack us then? Then we have Bahrain. Bahrain, more than 80% of it is Shia already, and they want Iran. So the Shia do not even need to invade Bahrain. All what they need is just to give some arms to the land, and then the people will take over. This is why the Saudi, they built the bridge, caused them billions of dollars between Saudi Arabia and Bahrain. Hoping, hoping that by doing that, they can, let us say, keep the land in touch with Saudi Arabia in case of invasion. All right. So Middle East, my friend, it can't go in war anytime, and the Middle East have no future. Like, if you are a person who have money and you are investing, let us say, in Dubai, Dubai is going to be a ghost town any second if one missile shot at it. Like today, if those things continue, Dubai will be empty. Uh... And now the, the, the Shia, they are taking, taking, taking control over a huge part of Yemen, you know, here. And the Sunni do not know what to do. I mean, 
with all the support of Emirat, Saudi Arabia, you name it, from all Islamic Sunni countries, still the Shia are beating the Sunni. Like lately in the last week, the Sunni, they were able to do some better job fighting the Shia, but generally speaking, the Shia, they are winning. How come most of Bahraini are Shia? Because the most of Bahraini are Shia. You know? Don't you know about Al Qurmuti? Al Qurmuti who destroyed the Kaaba? Don't you remember the story? This is where the Qurmita is coming from, from this land. One day those Qurmita became powerful. They took over all over the land and they are Shia. Al Qurmuti, he attacked the Kaaba. He killed 10,000 Muslims who were doing Hajj around the Kaaba. He destroyed the Kaaba. He took the black stone and he made it as a poop stone for 21 years. He is the one, the famous one who said, who screamed, saying to Allah, where is your bird? Because the Quran claimed that Allah, he sent birds to protect the Kaaba. So he destroyed the Kaaba. He killed the Muslims there, the Muslim Sunni. And he was screaming, saying, who, where is the, hey Allah, where is your birds? Huh? huh? Where is your birds? No birds show up. <clears throat> and by this, by the way, uh, uh, when he attacked the Kaaba, destroyed the Kaaba, a lot of people left Islam because they noticed that this is the Kaaba is nothing. Anyone can destroy it. And in the history of Islam, the Muslim they report how many times the Kaaba was destroyed and even burned. Al Hajjaj, he destroyed the Kaaba. Al Qurtumi destroyed the Kaaba. I mean, everybody, everybody destroyed the Kaaba. And Allah never do anything to protect the Kaaba. So, you know, for me as a Middle Eastern, I say, thank God I don't live in this land no more because this is the land of war. Those lands will never have peace. They will never have peace. Look now, I mean, if we, if we, if we try to even this is became about politics, but it's about religion at the same time. Unlucky. Turkey is collapsing. Bankruptcy. No money. The banks is almost empty. Syria? Ah, I'm not going to tell you. The country is too much divided, too many militant, no food, no money, nothing. Kurdish took part. Turkish took part, American took part, Iran took part, the Russian took part, so it became like a shish kebab and everybody is taking a bite. Jordan, I'm not going to explain to you Jordan, Jordan they don't even have money to fill up the swimming pool with water. They don't even have water. Iraq, there's no country in this country and we'll never have a country. Because now Iran is controlling a huge number of the Shia, and those Shia, they have a huge power. They are even equal to the army. So sooner or later, you will have a civil war again in Iraq between Shia versus Shia or Shia versus the army. We go where? I mean, who's left? You name, you name it. I mean, you tell me. Sudan, ah, go watch the news, click them, you know. Civil war, dictators, army trying to take over, blah, 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 blah. Yemen, is, the country is burning. Saudi Arabia is in war with Yemen and, the, and they are invading inside Saudi Arabia. Iran is in war with everybody. Pakistan, sooner or later, the country is collapsing actually. They are asking the American to put more bond so they, the, their, their currency will not collapse. They have no money, no more. You believe it or not, this is a country support terrorism, big deal. But the one who rescued them is always the American. Afghanistan, I'm not going to explain to you. You know better. <laughs> what is left? Who is running in Syria? Uh, Shia. The one is in control is uh, the president is Alawi. And Alawi is a form of Shia. However, 
Hezbollah and Iran, they have a major impact in Syria now, and the Russian. We can say that Putin is the king in Syria now. And he will be the king in Syria for the coming, maybe, you know, until he die. Right? So, if you are a person who used to be in the Middle East and you are out, you are lucky. This is the land of hell. There's no future of it. There's no future. Even for Israel, there's no future. In Israel, they have a big illness. It's called liberals. The liberals are against Israel. Can you believe it? There's a there's a singer, there's a there's an Israeli singer. She made a song, make fun of Dubai for signing peace agreement with Israel. And in her song saying that we, you know, uh, 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 we took the land of the Palestinian, uh, we demolished their right, uh, we uh, killed their children, blah, 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 blah. I mean, all the song is really horrible against Israel. And she is an Israeli. A nation have people like this, will never have a future. They will never have a future. Lebanon, there's no country. Lebanon is a farm. But there's no there's, there's no currency in Lebanon. The 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 one dollar is forty thousand lira in Lebanon. So imagine you are a person who have a retirement from the government, and your salary, let us say, it is fifty thousand lira. Your salary. This is when you retired. It was good money. Now it's one dollar, one dollars and twenty cents or two cents. <laughs> so there's no; those countries are gone. Those countries are in; the, they are in hell already. They have no future. In Lebanon, I can describe Lebanon better than a farm, because every territory is controlled by lord. And every lord is a puppy of somebody else. Uh, <laughs> any other question? All those countries are hold together because of the American. If the American, they put their nose away, all this land will be in hell. The American is the police, is holding Muslim countries, not attacking each other. This is why Islamic population never increased. It increased now because the American, they don't allow them to go in war. Like when Saddam Hussein, he attacked Iran. Why he attack Iran? Because the American allow it. As simple as that. If the American, they said, no, Saddam Hussein would never dare to do so. So, uh, uh, the, the American, they said to themselves, why won't attack Iran at that time? Let the Arab attack Iran. And then the money start coming to Iraq from Saudi Arabia, from Imar, etc. Like, 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 like a uh, portion of money. And the Saudi Arabia almost bankrupt. All the oil, all the money of the oil is gone to Iraq. After eight years of war, the Arab lost. They lost. Eight years. Uh, somebody saying Lebanon used to be majority Christians per war. Yeah, I mean, this is majority Christian or not. You see, the, the, the Christian is not about majority by population. The Christian is about how many people are Christian there. And I say to you, in those countries, there's no Muslim, there's no Christians. There's corrupt people. Prostitution is number one business. The F word is hello. Filthy tongue, everybody. Don't fool yourself with, you know, like the word Christian and the word, you know, those, they lost their dignity a long time ago. There's a few, you true believers, the rest is just numbers. 
There is no future, no religion, but Islam. As you see, this is all Islam. Islam is collapsing, you idiot. What's wrong with you? Even your prophet, he says, Islam will shrink and Islam will die. And then the Abdul says to you, the future is Islam. <laughs> Isn't it your prophet, he says, that Islam will go to its, its hole the same as a snake? Abdul. Which country you are from? Is that important for you, Mr. I am Sudan? Is that really important? Why you are keep repeating the same stupid thing? I'm black, blonde, African American from Japan. Are you happy? Which country you are from? From this garbage countries, all of them. And you know what make me really upset about people who come to America from the Middle Eastern? It doesn't matter Christian or Muslims. All they are the same. Arab Christians, they are so proud. Arab Muslims, they are so proud. And then you sit with them, mm, America is bad. Look at California. Look at it. So why you are here? Go back. A bunch of hypocrite cowards. They die to come to America. They sleep in the street in the front of the embassy to get the visa. They do anything to get the citizenship. And when they come to America, America is bad. I hate America. This is, you know, like, go back, go back, you stupid son of Muta. Who's holding you? Go back to heaven. They will not go. When Trump, he decided to kick those who have a green card only, but they have a crimes. Everybody start, please, please, our son, don't kick him out, you know, and the son crying, please, in front of the judge. Suddenly, he's a drug dealer. He want to kill everybody around him. Suddenly, he is a decent. Why? Hey, please, I, I want to be an American, please, you know. This is reality, my friend. I never saw hypocrite people as much as Middle Eastern. Hypocrisy is their blood. If you test their blood, you will find 99.9, like the election in, in the Middle East. 99.9 .9 is hypocrisy. The one is not hypocrisy, is lies. They love it. And this is not only the Muslims, by the way. I just say to you, Arab Christians is no better. I never saw one Arab, Christian or a Muslim, he is not so proud. About what? I have no idea. You tell me, about what? Police there is corrupt. Judges is corrupt. King is corrupt. President is corrupt. Your sister cannot walk in the street because if she did, a 1,000 men would touch her ass. So you have to have to have to be a guardian with her. If a woman she go in the bus, she will she will, she will come out of the bus. She have a baby already. This is the Middle East. But nobody speak about honor, and nobody speak about dignity, and nobody speak about uh, uh, honesty as they do. But you go in their street, garbage everywhere. You put your laundry in the window, it's gone. But where's my underwear? It's gone. This is why every house in the Middle East have bars. Do you see how much security we have? How much decent people we have? In America, there's no bars. And they say America is bad. And then they say to you, there is a crimes in California. In America, if, if somebody fought, this is a camera, the country have a 300 million. If one of them, he fought, he will be in TV. All the people we have there, it will never be in TV. The truth hurt, my friend. There's a guy, he took a picture of himself when he was six, seven years old, next to a hole in the front of his house. And then he took the same picture when he is 35, 36 years old. Same place, the hole is still there. The same hole in front of his house, still there. Why? You call the company, when you are going to fix it, they will say, Inshallah, we will send our team, Inshallah, to fix it, Inshallah. This is the whole country is run by Allah. That's why the whole country is screwed. The only countries who have a better now because of the money, like Dubai, because the one who run the country is not, Inshallah, is the Christians, is the Indian, is the foreigners.
go to Chicago. Uh, trust me, Chicago is nothing to compare to the Middle East. Nothing to compare. You have no idea. You have no idea. In the Middle East, over a bird, I remember I was a kid, over a bird, more than 20 people get killed. Over a bird. Fight over a bird. This is not a drug thing. A bird. A pigeon. Chicago. Oh boy. Just to show you people, you know, just to show you how ignorant people here. They think a gunfight in Chicago can you compare to the Middle East. Just let, let me let me give you a, just a little bit. I will take you around the trip. <laughs> oh, Chicago, huh? Mm. I want to show you what Chicago is about. Do you see this? Do you see those cars with those arms? This is a family. So when two families go in a fight over, over a pigeon, missiles will be used, RBG, 7-Up, 7-Up, huh? Pepsi, you name it. And you are telling me Chicago? What do you know? Chicago. <laughs> oh. Madness. Madness. You want to take a you want to take a look about Chicago, your Chicago? This is their snack. Here they are dancing, brother. This is their children's. Chicago. <laughs> Chicago. <laughs> oh Lord have mercy. You know? <laughs> And this is how real, real people there, this is how they are. If I, if, I, if I show you, you will not believe it, you know. They are naked, they have no shoes, they don't cut their hair, and they have bullet more than their teeth. They are arms to their teeth. And you are telling me Chicago, go, just go there. Fight with one of them, and let me know what will happen. Chicago are fooling who? Shall I take you to a different country? Shall I take you to Iraq now? Or you want to go to Lebanon? Mr. Chicago? Or you want me to take you to Libya? Or Somalia? Chicago? Or Afghanistan? This guy, he thinks Chicago is hell. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy <clears throat> Arab Christians are the same way no but still they are armed too like if you go to Lebanon all Christians are so armed like just last year last year a few months ago uh, when the Shia they tried to attack a Christian area you know they came a couple of hundreds the Christian they killed seven Shia and they lost zero. So the Shia Hezbollah are very armed, very well armed, but the Christians are very well armed too. And they are very aggressive, extremely aggressive. So they attacked the Christian area and they thought, okay, those Christians they will not do anything, you know, we can do whatever we want. But then the Christians there, they made them shish kebab. 
literally. You can watch, you know, and you can go to the to the news. <clears throat> like the 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 PP gun there in Lebanon is, uh, you know, M sixteen. This is the PP gun. It's like hello. But anyway, I like Chicago's story. Chicago is a war zone. Chicago is a war zone compared to America. You want to see a real war zone? Go to the Middle East. <clears throat> uh, and wherever Islam goes, things will go really horrible. Well, you know, the Arab Christian, they have no choice to either you protect yourself or you will be a puppy for them. So like if you live in Lebanon, you have to arm yourself, otherwise they will take over you. They have no choice, what mindset? It is the place you live in, control what you do. <clears throat> not a single country in the Middle East is not burning as we speak. Not a single country in the Middle East is in peace, as we speak, in the Middle East. For a very simple reason. Islam. Islam is the problem. Wherever you go, Islam is the problem. <laughs> Lord have mercy. You know, and I like it when somebody, he never been in those areas, and he want to tell you about what's happening in those areas. How about Kurdistan? It's the same. What Kurdistan? It's the same. Kurdistan now is doing okay because the American there. The second the American leave, the Kurdish, there will be shish kebab. Just wait. And you know, the Kurdish should not trust the American. Nobody should trust the American. Trump, he decided suddenly to take his army and leave the Kurdish so the Turkish can eat them alive. And the Kurdish are no match to fight the Turkish. So the Kurdish right now, they are doing fine. But as soon as the American, they leave, and this is the bent in who is the president. This country, America, does not have really a leadership. It had parties. One party go to the right, and one party want to go to the left. So when this party go and win, he demolish everything the other party did. So the Kurdish now, they might not go into bankruptcy, let us say, and be slaughtered by the, the, the Turkish, because Joe Biden, obviously, he don't like the, you know, the Turkish government. Trump, he was, a, he was a puppy. He never said no to the Turkish, never. Obviously, he have a business in Turkey, and he put his business first. They are business people. We don't have really leaders. You know, when I say I vote for Trump, Trump is a corrupt, Biden is a corrupt. All of them, they are a bunch of puppies, and they are not a true leaders. However, we don't have better. Trump still is better than the rest. Uh, <laughs> CP, the countries, we cannot carry guns, how we can protect our children. Well, if you cannot protect, uh, carry guns, well, you carry whatever you can to protect yourself, what you can do. What you can do. Right? You do what you can do. But the coward is the one who do nothing to protect his own family. You see, a coward person, he die 1,000 times a day. A brave man, he die once. Why Shia, they beat themselves in the street? Simply because the Sunni, when they killed the grandsons of Muhammad, the Shia did not come to help and support the grandsons 
of Muhammad. So they beat themselves for sorrow. The Sunni, they killed the grandsons of Muhammad. And the Shia did not jump to support the grandsons of Muhammad. So this is why, in this occasion, they beat themselves until they bleed. And this is why the hatred between the Sunni and the Shia is impossible to fix. Well, it doesn't matter really who is going to come, Democrat, Hillary Clinton, or anything. The same garbage. And if G if uh, Trump, he came back, he is, is stupid too. I mean, Trump is not really good. But he is better than Joe Biden. At least he can fix the price of fuel and gas and food. But Trump is not really that genius. The only smart thing he did when it's come to politics abroad, it was putting sanctions in Iran. The rest is stupid. Trump, he was not the president of USA during the four years of his presidency. He was a president of Israel. All what he is busy with is how to make the Arab shake hands with the Israeli. That's it. That's why they got him in the election. He was not aware what what preparing for him. Zoraida, I just answered, the Shia, they beat themselves because they did not support the grandsons of Muhammad when the Sunni, they killed them. <clears throat> uh, how Muhammad, he have a grandson? Will Muhammad, he have a grandson from his stepdaughter? However, the Shia, they believe that Fatima is the only true daughter of Muhammad. The rest are stepdaughters. So this is what the Shia believed. The Shia believed that Fatima is a true daughter of Muhammad. And her sons is the grandsons of Muhammad. And they worship them. The Shia, they don't believe that Muhammad and his family, they are people like us. They believe that they are light from the forehead of Allah. And they have a form of a human, but they are made of light. <clears throat> uh, you know, I don't want to talk about Trump, but Trump for me, he was really dumb in many, 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 many things. One of them is the Turkish, uh, uh, even with Iran. I mean, the Iranian, they hit back and they injured more than 20 soldiers and Trump, he act if he hear nothing, you know? This is not how, like this now, the, the, the Republican, they say to you that Joe Biden is not as strong. Well, was Trump strong? What he did with Iran, beside the sanction? He killed the, the one guy? Even that one, it was for the benefit of Israel. In USA, we don't have really a true leaders. We don't. Trump is not a true leader. He's a businessman. He's a corrupt too. He starts hiring his daughter, his son-in-law, and everyone knows that they are corrupt. He's a brother-in-law. Trump, he went in the House, White House says, Qatar have to stop supporting terrorism. Two weeks after, Qatar rented the building of the son-in-law of Trump for 100 years. Have you ever heard of a deal like this? And they paid him a rent for a 100 year in advance. Isn't it obvious that this is a bribe? One billion dollar? From all the buildings in New York, they could not find a building to rent except the building of the son-in-law of Trump. So my friend, when they speak about Joe Biden, his son is a corrupt, Trump is no better. Ivanka, Ivanka, she is a girl, she do fashion. Suddenly she became the consultant. <laughs> what a scam, man. But I know, it's hard to share the truth. 
uh, uh, a woman, she makes shoes and she sells shoes and bags. She became the consultant of the most powerful man in the world. And her husband is the second consultant. I mean, who is left? What is missing is to hire his son, 10 years old, and make him consultant too. Yeah. But we, you know, we have no choice but to vote for Trump because look at those idiot Democrats. Democratic Party is, is a kind of a collection of mental illness ideas. So when we say we want Trump because we don't have better, I mean, <laughs> there's only this or this. So Trump is way better than them still. One million times better. I mean, have you ever heard of a, of a, of a, 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 anyone, a, any government, they don't want to arrest a thief? You go in New York, you see people, if you, if you steal something less than $1,000, they want to arrest you. I mean, so they go to Walmart, they grab a bunch of things and they will leave. They call the police, they said, so what we would do, it's not, it's less than 1000 That's why California is messed up. That's why the guy here was saying to you, Chicago, right? But still, we cannot compare it to the Middle East. We don't have leaders. We have a bunch of a bunch of idiots. If you are a person is going to come to America, never go to a liberal state. Never. It doesn't matter who you are. Unless you are a thief. Because then you will enjoy it. <clears throat> Take a look. This is one of the beautiful beaches in California. Nobody want to work. <laughs> you know, they say to you homeless, like if you show this, they will say to you American, look, they are poor. This is not true. They, why do they want to work? They got free money, free food, and nobody can kick them, smoke, drink, sex. This is not because this country is poor. They are out of, they, they, they don't have even, you know, like, they cannot even find workers to work. But they don't want to work. This is why liberal states are the most, and not only drugs, look at this, look at this, look at this, zombies. Liberals. And this is a city, 70, uh, no, sorry, 95% or 97% of it is atheist. A zombie city is very well known. Philadelphia. This is what happened to you when you leave your children without the Bible. Here we go. All of them, they are atheist. All of them. Look at this person. Look at this. What is this? Drugs. Oh. I better change this. This is disgusting. I mean, this is liberals, liberals, liberals. They are the same as Muhammad. Anything they touch, they turn it into dust. As simple as that. So if you are a person who got a green card, you want to go to America, I advise you, never go to a state controlled by liberals. Never. Last time I went for the election, you know, you give your ID, etc. So the girl, she want to show me where to go. She said to me, you have an accent. Where are you from? I said, I'm an Arab. Middle East. So it's strange. Usually, 
Arab and Middle Eastern, they vote for Democrat. I said to her, I'm not stupid. You should see her face. She was Democrat. But to her, I'm not stupid. <laughs> I mean, why want to vote for Democrat? Give, give me a reason. Democrat. And nobody, you know, the, the Democrats are the same as Islam. If you don't agree with them, they play victims. Oh, he's racist. He's against the black people. What the black people have to do with Democrat? Actually, Democrat is the only, the, the party who supports slavery always. They play victim right away. If you don't vote for Biden, you are racist. You are white supremacist. Like, what the heck? They try always to frame you, you know? They are like Muhammad. Why you are voting for them? We vote for what is right for the Christian. When I vote, I don't vote for them. Who said I vote for them? I said I vote for a Republican. What's wrong with you? When I vote for Republican, I'm voting against abortion, against everything which is not I don't agree with. As a Christian, I'm not voting for Trump. I'm voting for what I believe. Anyway. 